Being a person of colour, coming from a South Asian community, I knew I was already going to be in a much higher risk group of getting coronavirus versus somebody who, for example, does not come up from a marginalised group. Some of the things that have to continue is the conversations have to keep happening. The next thing that really I believe needs to happen is our education needs to be challenged. One kind of perception of my life is not overpowered by another part. It's to ensure that they can move so thinkly going forward. Lots and lots of things that we as an LGBT plus community are doing right platform to those marginalised groups that have always been sidelined or been considered. But the important thing is that we need to move forward and continue to do more. It's never enough. It's not about just giving us a platform for 2020, because 2020 is when the pandemic happened, and 2020 is when Black Lives Mattered, and 2020 is when Black Trans Lives Mattered. It has to be something that we continue to do throughout our lives to ensure that we represent society in the true way. My pronouns are she and her. I'm a trustee and a volunteer coordinator for Hidaya. We are a LGBT plus Muslim charity who are nationally based and we help support LGBT plus Muslims who want to reconcile between their faith and their sexuality. I'm based in Cardiff. Initially, when the pandemic first started, I didn't feel safe at all. I didn't leave my house for about nine weeks, not for the daily exercises. I very much kept to myself. It was during that time that my chosen family, Hidaya, and my friends around me have really helped me in feeling safe and having a sense of support around me. So without them, I definitely wouldn't have been able to make it throughout that time without having a severe impact on my mental health. My main reason for not leaving the house was purely out of the, um, the worry of, of, of catching um, coronavirus the uncertainty that the government and everybody had. Nobody really knew what was happening. And also, being a person of colour, coming from a South Asian community, I knew I was already going to be in a much higher risk group of getting coronavirus versus somebody who, for example, does not come up from a marginalised group collaboration from LGBT plus communities right from the off has been very enlightening. To see that organisations like Stonewall and Consortium were getting together, were holding forums online for organisations to talk about what their, uh, for example, events were that they were running, what the issues that they were having. When I was growing up, having a queer Indian, like a Bollywood movie with people like Anil Kapoor in, for example, and storylines, I could never imagine in a million years watching a Bollywood movie and it being about a lesbian couple. Um, so we've definitely moved on from where we were. I think the work that our for example, people in the past that have been in these forms of groups have been, has been really to lay the foundations of where today's activists walk upon. But one of the things, or some of the things that have to continue is the conversations have to keep happening. The next thing that really I believe needs to happen is our education needs to be challenged. More and more children are coming out at an earlier time, are identifying as being gender fluid, and are opening themselves up to be part of the rainbow family at an earlier age. 
definitely has been movements in the South Asian community. There's still a lot to be challenged. A lot of that comes from families not having had the opportunity to really have the questions asked to them. Above everything else, why would you favour your child pretending to be straight over happiness? Above everything else, you know, um, is that um, which some people would know to be, um, for example, about their respect in the community or their standing in the community. Does that really matter? Those are the type of questions that really need to be asked. Communities need to be tackled. That LGBT plus people are everywhere. In our own Muslim communities, in our South Asian communities, Bearing in mind my sister, who went to school in the UK, who has a queer sister herself, still very much cotton wooling her children. And those children are not learning anything because they'll go to school, an environment which will not be open to LGBT plus people, would not be tackling questions like colonialism, will not be questioning things like racism necessarily in a school. Then they'll be coming home living within the communities, only speaking to people within the communities, not having any other kind of, uh, for example, um, thought or any other kind of avenue presented to them that kind of allows them to open up their minds and their own communities to know that heterosexual people is not just what the communities and what the society is made up of. To me, in 2020, means a sense of belonging. It means that it's a community that I feel accepted and I feel very much a part of. Pre-pandemic, every pride I ever went to, I felt safe. I felt like these are my people. And I looked around and I had a sense of joy. And then when pride was cancelled on physical terms this year and everything was moved online, it was amazing to see lots of different Pride organisations rally together and still have an online presence. For me, Pride also represents that collaboration. It represents that togetherness, that despite not being together in person, physically, we were still able to bring it together for the LGBT plus community. The only way really to carry on is to understand that intersectionality is such a big word except so many of us. Intersectionality can look at things like, it can look at my faith, it can look at my identity, it can look at my gender. Um, and to understand that all of those things are a part of me, an equal part of me. So when you are moving forward, the biggest challenge is to ensure that one kind of perception of my life is not overpowered by another part ensure that they can move succinctly going forward and that would only be through safe spaces it would only be through having the right spaces in order for us to voice our concerns for us to find representation to understand that it's a privilege in 2020 to be a visible queer muslim and that's not a privilege that I think is a good thing because being a queer visible Muslim in 2020 should be a privilege. And that is also yet another intersectionality visibility. People don't really understand. When you're out there and you're looking for people and you're wondering, well, where is everybody? Where are the LGBT plus Muslims? Where are the LGBT people? You know, they are as much as part of your community as I am, but they're not visible. Last year, I went to Brighton Pride and Hidayah were asked to be at the forefront of the parade. And it was probably one of the happiest moments in my life. I ever felt so much pride and so much joy at being a queer visible Muslim at that point. The important thing is that we need to move forward and continue to do more. It's not about just giving us a platform for 2020 because 
2020 is when the pandemic happened, and 2020 is when Black Lives Mattered, and 2020 is when Black Trans Lives Mattered. It has to be something that we continue to do throughout our lives to ensure that we represent society in the true way that society is. Not being out as a queer Muslim for the majority of my life, every city that I visited and I saw the rainbow flag, it really gave me a sense of pride within. In that kind of secret wink that we're here and we're for you and we're with you. And I knew that I could walk into that place and I could be myself. And then this year, when the pandemic happened, and I was walking down the streets, I saw the rainbow flag on windows and on front doors, would save our NHS underneath there. Pride and belonging were the last things that I felt. It wasn't because I'm not pro NHS, anything but NHS need more of everything that the government does not give them. But I genuinely do believe like the rainbow flag was hijacked by this movement. And whether it's because the rainbow flag effectively represents a better time, it represents joyous ha ha happiness. And that's maybe why they used it, I don't know. We absolutely do need to think about reclaiming this for the LGBT plus community because that is where it was founded. It was what it represented. It represented the LGBT plus community saving the NHS. One of the things over the last year that I've done is every time I say my name, I say my pronouns. Pronouns, I would probably say, is just as important as your name. And for those of us who identify as they, them, or no pronouns at all, to just say, hi, my name is Farina and my pronouns are she and her, will make a massive, massive difference. In which I've changed identifying or to maybe find more different identities is to incorporate my pronouns in any which way I possibly can. Every day in work, I introduce myself to a new set of people that I'm delivering training to. And every day I say my pronouns and I ask them for theirs. Every day when I have that conversation, I say to them what pronouns are. I also say to them that saying anything or it is not an acceptable answer.